Let's start off with what is MicroPython? MicroPython is an implementation of regular Python that's used on computers, often called CPython, but designed to be lightweight and compact so it can run on many microcontrollers and embedded systems. MicroPython is based around Python 3, but with extra modules like Machine that gives you direct access to the hardware on your microcontroller. The ESP32 is an amazing hardware platform for MicroPython. It's one of the main motivations for me designing my tiny Pico. Working with MicroPython isn't anything like working with the Arduino IDE. Let's have a look at the differences and why MicroPython is a really great alternative to working in C. MicroPython lives on your microcontroller and exposes a file system that you can add your code to. You can store as many MicroPython scripts and libraries on there as you like until your file system runs out of space. And any code you want to have run when the device boots just needs to be in a file called main.py. In Arduino C, you compile your code against the ITF and the Arduino core libraries, and then you flash your code onto your microcontroller. If you want to change any code, you need to load it back up in the Arduino IDE, change the code, recompile, and reflash. The code is machine code, so it's faster to execute, but can't be altered or easily copied back off and reused. MicroPython executes bytecode at runtime, so though it's not a runtime interpreted language, it's not as fast as machine code. But MicroPython can use C modules that are compiled to machine code and can now also use assembler modules. In MicroPython, you can invoke the REPL and type and run code directly on the microcontroller. So testing and iteration times are super quick. Reading and understanding MicroPython is easy. It's almost just like reading English. It's a modern and advanced language that supports features like tuples and comprehensions, where strings and JSON are natively and intuitively implemented. It's a pleasure to work with. Let's have a look at how we can get MicroPython on our ESP32. There are two ways to get MicroPython. The first one is via the source code, which you'll have to compile yourself. So at the github.com slash MicroPython URL, you'll find MicroPython. And what you want to do is go to the MicroPython folder. You want to clone it or download it. It's up to you. You'll need the whole MicroPython install, but the instructions to actually compile for the ESP32 is inside ports, ESP32, and down here you'll find a lot of steps and instructions on how to actually be able to compile and build MicroPython from source. You'll need to download the Espressive IDF, which is the API for the ESP32. There's quite a few steps involved per platform to get everything going. A few things you'll need to install along the way, some config files you'll need to set up, some paths, and then you'll be able to just do a make arrays to delete what's currently on the board and a make deploy. So it's super simple to update and build MicroPython and deploy it to your board from source once you've followed all those steps. If you're new to MicroPython, I don't recommend you going this way. What I recommend instead is you go to micropython.org, which is the home of MicroPython. You can just go straight to download. You can see the different boards that MicroPython supports right now. You want to go to ESP32, and you want to just download the latest binary. So it's already pre-built for you. And we're going to be using ESP tool, which comes with the Arduino IDE and the IDF to erase and reflash MicroPython onto your microcontroller board. So we're going to do that now. I've already downloaded the latest MicroPython. So I'm going to be installing it on my tiny Pico board. So let's do an erase and a build and flash of MicroPython. Okay, I've already got my MicroPython binary downloaded. I've got it in a MicroPython underscore bin folder in my downloads. So as you can see here, there's just the one file in there. The instructions talk about port and slash dev slash TTY USB. In my case, it's not TTY USB. Uh, that would be a Linux thing. In my case, I'm using the CP2104 from Scilabs. So what I'm looking for is a Scilabs device. So the easiest way to determine what device you've got is to do an LS slash dev slash, it'll be a TTY something. So TTY now you can do a star and that's going to list everything that's a TTY. In my case, I know that there's a dot before. So I do a dot star and I can see that there's a slash dev slash TTY dot slabs, so scilabs, USB to UART. So that's going to be my device name instead of slash dev slash TTY USB. It'll be different on your machine depending on your operating system and what board you're installing it from. For instance, if it's got a, a CH340 on there, it'll be a different name. So the first thing you want to do always is an arrays. Now, what an arrays will do is either clean out any MicroPython install that's already on the board, or will clean out any other microcontroller code that's on there, maybe from the Arduino IDE or from the IDF. So I'm just going to make it really easy for myself. I'm going to copy and paste the first part. Paste, 
my port, I'm going to go slash dev slash tty dot s and I can hit tab to do autocomplete and then arrays flash. That's going to look for the board, it's going to try to connect to it, it found it, it's doing an arrays right now and it's done and it's done a reset, it took 3.5 seconds to do an arrays. Awesome, so right now there's nothing on the chip at all. So now I want to put MicroPython on there. So I'm going to do the same thing again, copy the first part, slash dev slash tty dot s tab. Now this is writing it at pretty slow, 46,800. I might increase that. I might do a negative board 921600. And I'm just going to copy and paste to here because I'm being a little bit lazy. And then I want to use the binary that's in this folder. So the easiest thing to do is just type in ESP and hit tab. There's only one file in there, so it found the whole thing. And hit enter. And again, it tries to find the device, finds it and it starts flashing it. And this is installing MicroPython onto the microcontroller. And it's done, awesome. So, if you're following along at home, congratulations, you've now got MicroPython on your microcontroller. How do we know MicroPython's on there? Well, we can type screen, and we can tell it the port. Again, dev slash tty dot stab and tell it the speed, 11.5200. And if I just reset the board, there it goes. In this particular case, there's no RAM on the board that I've got right now, but it's built into MicroPython. You can see here, it's an ESP32 Pico. It's been built against the ESP IDF version 3.3, and basically, I'm now in a REPL. So I have got MicroPython on here, and from here, I can type in MicroPython directly. Hello, world. There we go, we have MicroPython on the board. Okay, it's time to talk about how we get code on a microcontroller. I tend to work at the command line and I use a tool called RShell, which I'll show you in a moment. There is a really cool editor that's been developed called Moo, and here's the website here, Code with Moo, which is basically an IDE for Python where it's got a real-time REPL in there and everything else, and on a lot of boards you can just save it directly to the board and the code will run on the board, and the results you get back in Moo are actually from the board. A lot of work is being done at the moment to extend that to ESP32 boards. The biggest problem with that right now is that there's no dedicated USB on the ESP32, so it's very hard to detect what board is being plugged in when it's just got a generic USB chip. So though I hope to be able to use Moo in the future, right now uh, I believe it's still very early days for the ESP32, so I am staying with RShell. So let's have a look at RShell. It's an open source tool that runs on any platform. It's Python based and basically gives you remote shell directly to your microcontroller board. And once you're there, you can copy files back and forwards from your main operating system to the microcontroller. You can pull up the REPL and type code directly in there. It's a very cool tool. It can be automated. I'm actually using RShell in some of my tiny Pico test jig code to be able to upload code and inject stuff directly to the REPL. So it's, it's a very extensive tool. I highly recommend you download and have a play with it. I'm going to show you how I use it right now. So I'm currently in my MicroPython Tiny Pico folder on my computer, which is a helper library that I'm developing for the Tiny Pico for MicroPython. There's a whole bunch of different files in here. Now what I can do is just go R shell, negative P for port. Some tools use negative port, some use negative P. I'm going to go to dev tty.s and that's it, hit enter and it's now connected. So I'm currently in my MicroPython Tiny Pico folder, as I mentioned. So it's showing you my local space on my computer. So I can type ls and I can see the same files. What I can also do is type ls slash pyboard. Now, RShell just assumes that all MicroPython boards are called pyboard. It was the original MicroPython board that was developed by Damien George. He's actually just released a brand new version of it. I'll put a link in the description if you want to grab one. It's a fantastic board, but it just calls every board pyboard. So if I hit enter, it'll show me what's on the actual ESP32. In this case, there's just a boot.py, which every MicroPython install on any microcontroller has a boot.py. It's basically a configuration file that gets run after MicroPython boots up. So we want to put some code on here. What we can also do is just type directly, before we put code on, REPL, and it puts me into the REPL. Now, 
A REPL is a, a real-time way of accessing the microcontroller. I can type code directly in here. I can even, as it says, type help. Welcome to MicroPython on the ESP32. Awesome. And it gives me a whole lot of information on how to exit and enter some example code. So as you saw before, I could just type in print and do something. I could also just create some variables. I could say A equals 10. I can say B equals 50. And I can say print string A plus B 60. So it's a great way to be able to just test code. You can even copy and paste code directly into it. But what I want to do in this case, I'm going to exit the REPL by doing control X. Puts me back to my command line of our shell. I'm going to actually copy some code over. So I'm going to use CP and I'm going to copy, what shall I copy? I'm going to copy everything over actually. So star dot Python. So everything from my local directory to PyBoard. It's going to copy all the Python over. And now again, I can do ls slash PyBoard and it shows me the files that are on my microcontroller. And from here, I can actually just go into REPL and I can say import. Now, import is just like an include in C land, but if there's actually code inside it, it'll run it automatically. So in this case, I'm just going to go import example. This is a file called example.py, as you can see just here, and hit enter. And it says, hello from Tiny Pico. It checks my battery voltage and it says that my current starge state on my battery is true. Fantastic. I can just hit control C to break out of that. And again, control X. So that's our shell. Whoa, information overload. Sorry. Actually, installing MicroPython isn't that daunting. It's no different to what the Arduino IDE does using ESP tool when it injects your code onto your microcontroller when you click build. So hopefully some of you will take the plunge and install MicroPython on one of your microcontrollers and have a bit of a play. I look forward to part two of this series where I'm going to start looking at how to actually code in MicroPython. I'm a MicroPython newbie, so you're not going to be getting expert guidance from me. You're just going to be getting, this is what I do. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to catching you all next time. Catch you later. Bye.